How badly, Ken, do they need a new eye product with all of the excitement around the release? Uh, well, they certainly uh, could use one. <laughs> There's an awful lot of anticipation, people saying they're behind. And uh, personally, I don't think they're behind. I think this is the year when, when something is due. And I think all indications are we'll see a very major uh, revamp of the product line in September. Well, your, your perspective is iconic. You, you mentioned when you first saw the phrase iPad, you thought it was a typo. Should they go after a lower profit, lower price point market? Or do they destroy the magic if they do that? I think they do destroy the magic if they do that. There's a lot of talk yeah. about a low-cost iPhone. I think you will see a lower-cost iPhone, perhaps. But it's got to have Apple quality to it, or um, it's not going to support the brand. We know that Apple is betting big, it's hiring, it's excited about the iWatch. We've heard a lot about this. Is this the kind of game-changing product like the iPhone and the iPad and everything else before it? Yeah, I think the iWatch, I'm, I'm personally holding out for one of those. Um, I think that will be a game-changing product. And I think, you know, there are a lot of them out there, just as there were a lot of music players when the iPod came out. I think Apple will do it in typical Apple style and, and wrist mm. apps will be a whole new world of apps. Well, as we await for that breakthrough iWatch, uh, the headlines, at least according to local media, is that Apple is testing for larger screens for its iPads, kind of incremental changes. These are not exactly the kinds of changes that um, Apple fans and, in particular, investors want to see. Well, I think, um, for example, iPhone, need. I think there should be a, a larger one. I expect that there will be because just as... Uh, Steve Jobs said that the 10-inch iPad was the ideal size and they would never do a smaller one. And then when enough of their market started eroding because of that, we have an iPad. But iPod. it's not enough to get I, the Apple faithful excited and believing that Apple's regained its edge. Uh, well, I think these are, these are in a way incremental uh, things. They have to happen, like the iPod line expanding over time. Those just right. the interest up. And then every three years or so, there's the big we, game change. We like it when guests take a victory lap. I'm going to allow you to take one right now. Uh -oh. 54 weeks ago in the New York Times, you told Brian Chen you were less than enthused about the surface. Mm -hmm. You said they were on script. You said, hmm, that's kind of clever. But clever is trouble in design. I mean, if you're trying to do a, it, 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 Steve Jobs magic is not about a gimmick, is it? No. Is the surface an example of Apple of what not to do? In many ways, yes. I mean, when you're competing with Apple, you're forced to come up with something to say it's better. So you say, look, we have a kickstand. Or, yeah, we have know, a kickstand on our bicycle. Uh, and, and then you don't really think about it until you own one, that the kickstand only works in one direction. You can't look at the thing that way. You have to look at it that way. So there are all these things that Apple thinks that. What is the business practice, Ken, at Apple to av so they avoid making a surface? Does that start with Mr. Cook, or is it down the food chain? Well, I think there's all uh, engineers, designers are all working together. But Steve Jobs used to talk about peeling away the layers of the onion. They'd have an idea, but then the real hard work begins to distill something to mm -hmm. its essence. Well, to Tom's point about the surface, and really to Scarlett's about the iterations of the iPhone, it does seem we're at a saturated point here in this market where we don't need to go out and wait in line for the next greatest and newest iteration of a product that we already have. Have we changed? Uh, no, I mean, I think we do. I mean, I'm still going out there getting my new iPhone when they come out. Um, and there are a lot of people. I think you, you want the latest and the greatest. I think you don't necessarily want a revolution. You want to own, when, you, when it's time to get a new phone, you want the latest and greatest. And uh, all the indications are there are going to be a lot of you know, interesting new features in the 5S or 6 or whatever it's called. I can't oh. wait for the 5S. I dropped my phone this week on purpose. <laughs> uh -huh. He's waiting with bated breath. Let's get to your wheelhouse for a moment because Apple's ads have seemed to a lot of people kind of eh, while Samsung has really hit the ball out of the park with its ads in many ways making fun of Apple. Right. Well, you know, like politicians, I mean, if you read the stories, if you have a lot of money, it really helps. <laughs> Samsung is spending like three times what Apple is spending. I travel the world. I mean, I go down boulevards of major cities and there are Samsung posters everywhere. And, and teaming up with Jay-Z. You just get the feeling things are happening in that world because they're on the big shows on TV. They're, they're all over the place. Um, yeah, but do you see traction? I mean, I'm beginning to see these bigger phones and I'm beginning to see people use them very quickly here. Are they gaining traction? I, I think they are. And I think it's a result of, of having the bigger screen, which a lot of people like, and spending a lot of money. And you get the feeling that there are things happening in that world. So I think Apple's got to respond with a bigger iPhone for one thing.